In this final video for Applied Statistics, we are going to take a look at multiple regression. Now the good news is with multiple regression, we actually have already studied everything that we need to know. So all we're going to do in Excel is to select an extra column or two. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to continue looking at the information that we have been studying, which relates the age of a student to his or her education, I'm sorry, to his or her reading level. And what we want to do now, because we feel very strongly that the student's age is a defining factor in his or her reading level, because remember we were looking at say 97% of the fluctuations in reading level had to do with age. But now we want to take a look at whether other factors play a role as well. So essentially what we're doing is we're still going to have the same output that we had before. So y hat is still going to represent reading level. Now in this case, however, we have more than one x value. So we have more than one explanatory variable and we're testing whether or not those um, do play a part. So two things that are gonna look different, the equation, which used to look like this, y hat is equal to b sub zero plus b sub one x. Well, now we're saying, okay, well, there's more than one x. So b sub one x one, and then b sub two x two, and b sub three x three, in this case, because we have three potential explanatory variables. So our equation is going to look like that. And then our hypotheses will again incorporate however many variables we have. So obviously in our example, we're going to have three variables, but you could have two, you could have three, you could have 17. It's really, you know, whatever the situation calls for. So again, the null hypothesis would be that all of those um, values are equal to zero. And then the alternative is that least one coefficient does not equal zero. All right, let's take a look at our data. Notice I still have the same data for age corresponding to the data for reading level, but now I also have teacher's experience and parents' education. So we're going to let age be x1, as we said. We're going to let teacher's experience be x2, parents' education be x3, and of course, reading level is going to be y hat or y and then we're going to actually compute a predicted y value. Now we're going to do this by letting Excel do all of the work for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my regression output, which we should be getting really good at by now. So I'm going to go to data, data analysis, and I'm gonna do things a little bit differently than I did last time. Um, the y range is still going to be the y range, but I, what I want you to notice, I went ahead and included the reading level title, and then I just make sure that I click labels. And the reason that I do that is if I do it the other way, you probably noticed in our last video, it didn't give the labels on the regression output, and I want it to. For the input range, again, I'm going to choose all three labels and all of the data, sorry, all of the data for those three labels. So it's essentially all three columns, but I'm only selecting the data values. And then I'm going to choose confidence level of 95% and the output range. I'm going to choose F1, again, just because I want it to be on this page. That's all I'm telling it to do. I don't need to click any of the other things. So this gives me a great output, and now we're going to talk about the things that are important in that output. So first of all, we already know, because we've talked about it before, that this guy is R, but it's actually the absolute value of R, so it's not going to give me a positive or a negative, it's just going to give me R. And this guy is obviously R squared. This is still the standard error, so that's helpful. Um, but let's talk about how we can now write our regression equation. So our equation, remember, is going to be y hat, and then it's going to be b sub zero, which is just the intercept. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this column of data. So my intercept is negative 6.983, and I'm going to add to that 0 0.898 times x1, because x1 is the age, and if you'll notice here, age goes with 0 0.0898. And then I'm going to add, well, I would say add, but I'm actually going to subtract then 0 0.033x2. I subtracted again because it was negative. And then x2 represents teacher's experience. And then I'm going to add 0.232x3. So what does that equation mean? Well, let's go ahead and get this equation in here using these cells. So my y hat is going to be, oh, let's just get rid of that then. My y hat is going to be the intercept value and then plus the next coefficient times, and here I'm just going to put an input cell for age, which is x1, and then I'm going to add the next value times the input for x2, and then I'm going to add the next coefficient value times the intercept, I'm sorry, the input value for x3. Now, this doesn't really mean anything yet, but here's where it would mean something. Let's say I had a 10-year-old, and the teacher had seven years of experience, and the parent's education level was, say, 14.2. So what does that tell me? That tells me based on all of those factors, so not just on age, but also based on teacher's experience and parents' education, I can expect that 10-year-old to have a predicted reading level of 5.1, which means one-tenth of the way through fifth grade. Now, the other thing that's super important in this output, well, two things. One thing that we have talked about before, this guy is the significance test. So this is what's telling us whether or not we should proceed. So with this value, which is P far less than alpha, then yes, this is significant. And that's what that value means. Well, significant, otherwise it just looks like sign, which doesn't make sense. The other thing that you want to pay attention to occurs right here. And the reason that we want to pay attention to that is because that is what tells us which variables have an effect on reading level. So if you'll notice, and we already talked about age when we weren't looking at multiple variables, we were looking just at age and reading level, and we said, yes, age does have a huge effect on reading level. But now I can look at that p-value and say p is less than alpha, and therefore it's significant. I can do the same for parents' education. We can see that both age and parents' education are less than alpha, and therefore those two values do have a huge impact on a child's reading level. However, look at this guy. This p-value is quite high. And so essentially what that's saying is that P is greater than alpha, and therefore we're going to fail to reject the null. So we're, essentially we're saying, no, there's not sufficient evidence to show that the teacher's education has an effect on a child's reading level. Up next, you have whatever you would like to have next. So you can continue studying math, calculus one, linear algebra, discrete math, or you can study something else. The point is just keep learning. Hope to see you in class or on my YouTube channel.